Hey everyone, and welcome to my first impressions video on the Geminate class for Frosthaven. This is the video series in which I talk about the starting classes from Frosthaven and I compare them a little bit to the Gloomhaven starting classes and some uh, comparisons to other things in Gloomhaven. And we just generally talk about the changes, how the difficulty, and you know, some ideas for some different builds potentially that we'd like to go with the different characters. Uh, this video is on the Geminate, but I have done the other classes too, so please check out the channel below please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content because it really helps me out this is actually the second time that i'm recording this one because unfortunately i lost the audio i'll talk about that in a minute but apart from that guys let's just uh, get into the geminate unfortunately the first time i recorded this um the uh audio was pretty unusable uh in a lot of places that was because i was messing around with the new nvidia rtx voice which uh might be great for suppressing sound uh while you're over discord and things like that but using it as part of like a streaming setup or content creation setup it just didn't work it really made uh, my voice very robotic in places um, and also because I use like EQ EQs and uh, I use a couple of other filters within uh, OBS that I use for recording and streaming it made it like the audio really choppy in places and it just was was pretty unusable so that's unfortunate and that's an hour and a half worth of uh, me talking at a camera gone but <laughs> let's uh take a look so i will try and approach this video as much as a first impression as i possibly can but if i look like i might know a little bit about it it might be because uh i do know a little bit about it because i have been looking at it uh in quite some depth already um I will also struggle with the name loads with this. I look back through the first uh, set of footage and I I think I called this character the Germinate probably about five times. So if I ever say Germinate, I'm sorry, but I really struggle with the name of this uh, class. It's Geminate. I know I'm going to try really hard to get that right. Geminate. Okay, I'll try and get it right. Okay, so let's just, uh, let's just take a look at it and uh, yeah, let's just get into it. So um, the Geminate has uh two sets of seven cards which is completely unique that's a really unique thing about this character no other cast has done anything even similar to this um so this is just like a, a completely like game breaking um or game changing um thing trait um so health wise we've got um a pretty healthy uh health track here this is like slap bang in the middle really of what you uh what you'd expect to see so you know we're not at the high end like 10 and we're not at the low end like six so we're um we're okay we're not made out of glass but we're not particularly strong either so uh let's look at the cards all right so Let's get into the special rules, because the special rules are always the first thing we want to look at. So, uh, there are a few special rules. Um, playing the Geminate, you can shift between two different states. So we have this symbol here, and we have this symbol here, and we can shift between the two. Um, so let's just call them, like, left and right. Um, I don't know if they have a name. They might do. Um, but let's just call them left and right for ease. Um, when selecting cards at the beginning of a round, the Geminate can only play cards from the state it is currently in, signified in the bottom center of the card. Okay, so we've got these symbols here to indicate what set of cards they're in and what uh, state they are. Uh, these symbols, these shifting symbols, force the Geminate to switch from one state to another following the white arrow. This switch happens at the end of the Geminate's turn if it is triggered. Uh, the Geminate may choose which state to start the scenario in. So that's nice. So you can choose whether or not you want to be left or right to begin the scenario. Uh, the Geminate has a single discard and lost pile for all cards as normal, but the Geminate must still be able to rest, recovering cards of both states, or play two cards based on its current state uh, each round, or become exhausted. So that's interesting. So even though that we kind of have two different sets of cards, they count... Uh, in one discard pile for the purposes of this so i presume then that you would have a technically you would have a hand of 14 but i i guess the way you're going to play because they're split into like two sets of seven you could probably pretty comfortably just put one set to, to a start to the side um you may want to have the both of them in your hand so that you can see okay i want to switch over and then i want to do this in the next round so there's a lot of information to take in there you know you're gonna have extra cards compared to most um most other characters to to take notice of so i mean there will be times when you can probably set aside the other seven and you don't need to necessarily look at them really closely but 
I think it is, you're going to want them both in your hand because you're going to want to be able to plan sort of a few turns, then maybe a few turns in advance, depending on, on what you're trying to do. Um, uh, you must still be able to rest, recovering cards of both states, uh, or play two cards based on its current state. Uh, okay. Uh, that one I'm a little bit like, this one, even the first time around I saw this, this was the bit that kind of like, I, I'm still not exactly sure what it means, from where it says recovering cards of both states. That sort of, um, I'm guessing that just means that you just, you just be able to recover cards, uh, and you would recover both states at the same time. So when you rest, you don't say, oh, I choose to recover the left, which is why there's a single discard pile. Uh, I don't really know why they've clarified it there because that to me makes it sound like oh if i don't have cards of a state then i can't rest you know it's just a, it's a bit it just reads a little bit strange but I, I get what they're trying to say they're trying to say that because it's a single discard pile you would be able you would pick up all of your cards from your discard not just one state which okay makes sense um or play two cards based on your current state or become exhausted. So what's interesting here is that this character does have the potential for you to be able to essentially um, exhaust yourself with cards still in hand, right? Um, yeah, because it says here, like, it is possible for the Geminate to become exhausted with a large number of cards in its hand if there are not at least two cards corresponding to its current state. So that is something you need to, to watch for. I think you can probably, you'd probably be all right if you're, pretty smart with playing but if you got carried away with yourself then yeah this is and you didn't sort of take notice of these switch symbols i think that could be a real a real concern but yeah makes sense you know you could you could in theory get yourself into a bit of trouble but when uh long resting you can switch states after recovering your cards so um you may end up doing a little bit more long resting with this character maybe compared to other characters because um choosing your cards is going to be more important to you and also maybe the switching of the states so that you don't end up getting exhausted because it could be really awkward for you if you were to short rest you know and maybe you would end up losing the card that you're going to really need to change states at some other point so you'd end up having to take damage you know that losing a card through short resting randomly could actually hurt you maybe a little bit more with this character compared to others but that all makes sense so i like this mechanic i like this mechanic a lot Okay, so onto the actual cards. So, Flailing Tendrils. So, we've got an attack two with Muddle. Uh, Muddle affects all allies in the targeted area. So, we're doing this nice little pattern here, which is a pretty pretty unique pattern. I don't, this is not a common pattern that we see at all. Uh, attack two and Muddle is fine. That's pretty decent. I don't mind that. Uh, affect all allies in the targeted area is obviously a drawback, so that's not so good. I do think that this pattern is going to be pretty difficult to um, to achieve. It's not um, like something that you're going to come across regularly. You're either going to need to set it up or get incredibly lucky, I guess. Um, so let's just say that in theory, you're probably going to be looking at maybe maybe getting two, maybe three targets here. Like, let's say that this is you, you know, you're going to be facing, let's say, this direction. You might be able to do something here, something here, or, or something here and something here. You might be able to get these two hexes here and maybe this one here or something like that. So it also is going to make you think, uh, it's going to be very interesting the way you have to think spatially on the board because, you know, this is, uh, this is a pattern that could fit in different um, situations. So... Uh, you're going to have to be um, kind of on the ball when you're playing this card with this pattern, I think. The effect all allies in the targeted area, that can be a pretty bad um, drawback. I don't like like muddling your allies. Let's say your ally is going to be doing like some crazy attack, right? You know, they've really, um, you know, they've played all of their like, uh, you know, they want to play all of their items. They're going to play their big burn card that's going to do a load of damage, a big AoE. They're going to spend all of the elements or, you know, they're going to really have a great turn and and then you you muddle them. Um, that can be that can be awkward. Uh, it is a late initiative on this card, though, so, you know, you, you can probably play this late. Uh, also, this is the kind of card that you might want to play late because you want to see if this kind of pattern develops. So, it's okay, you just have to play around with it. I, I think in a vacuum, like if this was just attack 2 and muddle with this sort of pattern, I think that would be like a okay uh, power level. I think that would be probably 
probably a good power level, like a, a nice utility control card. But this drawback makes me kind of take pause on it. I, I, I um, it, it's a little bit awkward. So eh, it's it's okay. This drawback though could hurt you, so you just need to be wary of that. Um, and also won't make you like a very popular person at the table, right? If you do this too much. Um, so the bottom is move three, and we will change from left to right. So move three, I like anything that gives us above and beyond the move two, so this is pretty good. Um, switching the states is going to be something that we're going to need to do, so it's nice to have like a move three, then switch states. This could potentially help you position for whatever you're planning to do on your on your following turn. So yeah, that's okay. Uh, Frost teeth, so it's uh, an attack five, pierce one. You can use a ice element to add an additional plus one attack and pierce, plus one pierce, and wind to add another plus one attack and another pierce. So this card uh, is crazy good. <laughs> I mean, it is very strong indeed. If you manage to get this stuff happening, to be honest, even if you didn't manage to use these elements, I still think that this would be a very strong card. Attack five, pierce one at level one is very strong. You do get some characters who get access to this later on from original Gloomhaven. There are some characters, you know, like the Brute gets an attack five, um, but that's later on. Uh, that's not at level one and it doesn't have pierce and pierce. It's only pierce one, so it's not, you know, um, sometimes this pierce bit will be irrelevant, but it is a nice bonus to have when you're going up against a high uh, armor enemy. And the fact that you can actually use these elements to bump this up even more and get extra XP, I think is really strong. You know, the fact that you could do an attack seven with pierce three, that will just rip through pretty much any enemy in, in Gloomhaven. That will absolutely tear through them. And if you were to pair this with, you know, any way to gain yourself advantage or on an enemy with poison or, you know, any other kind of items that you want to use to maybe increase this attack, I think it's, it's a superb. So this is a very, very strong action very very strong it is a burn which is completely understandable because this is very strong if you could recur this would be just ridiculous so it's a burn card so you know you're not going to be using it all the time um you're going to be using it once and you know it's going to have a very very powerful effect but very strong very very good i think to be honest you'd even be happy with just using one element here i wouldn't be um unless i could make both of them like you know quite easily i would be very very happy to just burn this you know for six attack pierce two for two xp that is absolutely fine so i wouldn't even you know i wouldn't even worry about getting everything on this card i think just doing it with just one element would be strong and to be honest just doing it without the elements you know in a pinch could also be quite strong so Excellent, excellent card. So uh, the bottom is Retaliate 1 and Shield 1. Um, so we've got a little bit of tanking here. Like, a, a, it's not a huge, you know, it's not a huge amount, but it's a nice little thing, you know, if you get yourself stuck in. Also, um, you know, we're not going to be wanting to play the top of this uh, straight away. You know, we're going to keep this one ready to power up with these elements, hopefully, and, you know, we're going to use that when we need it. So it's nice to have something like utility on the bottom here. Don't know how much tanking this character is really going to do. Our health pool isn't the best, but if we could maybe, you know, soak a little bit of damage off of our main tank, you know, off tank a little bit, um, then, hey, Retaliate 1 is a nice little effect. So this, this, yeah, this has use. This has use. So very, very strong card. Top is, is bonkers. Bottom is so-so, but it's a, it's a very strong card. Uh, ambitious Dare. So we've got Attack 2, uh, Wound, um, self stun and poison self plus two attack okay so this confused me the first time around when i first saw this card when i was recording and the reason um for that was the templating on this card is a little bit awkward i understand the templating now so the way that this works is very similar to the way the elements work so we get attack plus two then if we like we can stun ourselves to add wound and if we like we could um poison ourselves to add plus two attack my problem with the way that this card is sort of templated is that we have the elements on the left hand side so it's like you spend an element and you get this effect so i'm not quite sure as to why they have done it the other way around with this card so they've kind of done the the um they've done the effect that you get uh oh no hang on no they haven't 
I'm I'm completely wrong. They have done it the right way around. So you wound yourself to add stun. Oh, I'm completely wrong. I, I misread it so badly the first time. I just com I just drilled it into my head. But no, they have done it. They have kept it consistent. The 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 expenditure is wounding yourself to add stun, right? Yes. And poisoning yourself to add plus two. Okay, great. I'm not quite sure why there's a little. Uh, I guess the little comma there threw me off a little bit. But no, that's good. That's that's. That's cleared that up. So second pass, that's cleared that up a lot more for me. Um, good. No, I like that. That's templated really nicely. Uh, apart from this little comma, which just threw me off a little bit. But I think, yeah, it's good. So um, attack two. Um, so if we were to wound ourselves to add stun. So stun is incredible uh, in Gloomhaven. It's the best effect. You know, you can add to any attack. Wounding yourself can be... Uh, a little bit tricky, but if you've got some heals and stuff, you can deal with wound. The wound isn't like the end of the world, you know. The wound is wound is not a you know you're going to uh, going to end your game kind of quickly. You you have a few turns to deal with wound usually, so you know I wouldn't be too worried about getting wounded, uh, depending on what kind of situation you're in. Obviously, if you were in a low health situation, then wound can be really bad. Um, but yeah. In theory, you could wound yourself, and wound doesn't trigger until the beginning of your next turn. If an ally could heal you, then you, they would essentially be able to remove the wound, so not a problem. Uh, you can poison yourself to add plus two attack. Now, poisoning is a little bit worse, in my opinion, because poisoning, it blocks uh, you from healing. So if, I, if someone was to play a heal card, it would just remove the poison, or just remove the poison and wound if you were both in this instance. Um, you wouldn't get the full effect of the heal. Um, if someone was to heal you and you just had wound, you would take the one damage from wound, then you would re you would heal up the full amount that they've given you, and you remove the wound. So poison kind of like uh, stops the uh, the heal from going through for the full full amount that the player's doing. So poison, in my opinion, is is harder to get. It's harder to get rid of for one, and also if you're in a position where you're going to be attacked a lot, it can really be you know very bad for you. So I think poison's the worst effect here on this card. Um, I like this. I think this is a nice card, and I re I like the kind of the I like the um, the kind of self um, damage that you're doing. You know, the fact that you're kind of like hurting yourself to add more powerful effects. I think it's an interesting way of balancing cards in Gloomhaven. There's a few characters that have had similar things in the past um, from Gloomhaven, and I do quite like them. Um, I just think that they need to be balanced in the right way, and so that you can mitigate the, the the effects you know it's a bad effect but you can mitigate them somehow and, and i like this this is you know i think this is well costed i think i i would i mean i would maybe argue that it should really maybe be the other way around because i feel like stun is the effect that you're probably going to be playing this card for the stun effect you're probably not going to be playing it for the plus two attack um so the way i see it is that i would probably be more likely to um take the wound here just do a two attack and a stun you know deal with something that's tricky i don't know whether or not i would actually use the um the plus two effect i mean there's going to be instances where you're going to use it all where you're going to do them both um but yeah so i mean stun to me seems like the most powerful effect here so that should probably have the worst drawback and that to me is poison in this situation not wound so because well i mean it depends it depends on what kind of character you're playing too right if you're if you're staying out of the firing line then poison is much better for you so it swings around about personally i i feel like it, maybe it would be the other way around but hey it's good. I like this card. I like the top of this. I think this is very useful. It's got some nice niche use, and um, yeah, it's going to definitely see some uh, some good use. Um, then the bottom, we've got move four and jump, and then we've got disarm, target two, one XP, and a lost card. So this is nice. I I, I really like move four. is excellent. I love move four. I'll have move four every day of the week, please. Adding jump on there is super nice. Um, jump is just something... I don't think we've actually seen many characters so far have much jump. Um, but jump is just something that... Um, once you start playing with jump and you start using a character with jump, boy, do you miss jump. 
boy do you miss jump so being able to basically run around a map with Im impunity not really having to worry too much about traps uh you can position yourself really well like for like certain uh, patterns you know for trying to do like flailing tendrils for example you know we can set ourselves up nicely to do a nice pattern um you don't have to worry about obstacles you can get in you know over enemies when enemies group and you nearly need to get away you can escape so jump is just excellent i, I love jump it's it's a really um it's a really useful thing to have and the fact that uh, we can also disarm at the end of this target two i think that's probably what elevates this to like a burn card is the fact that this disarm effect is there um because this is you know, essentially you can definitely make this um almost turn into a stun so you know disarming certain enemies is is as good as stunning them so uh excellent really good i really like this the fact that it's a burn is a little bit you know it makes me a little bit nervous because it means we're going to be playing the top of this card a lot and not the bottom of this card very much so if we are going to be taking this card we have to be aware that this drawback is really going to come into play so you know we'll, we'll have to think about that you know we are going to be getting wounded and poisoned ourselves because we are not playing this uh this early in the scenario unless we get ourselves into a, a bind okay changeling's boon so attack two attack two really simple design i like these um uh, uh, attacks that split them up between two um separate attacks because it means stuff like poison works twice uh, stuff like advantage um can work twice if you have strengthened for example uh, that can work twice uh, yeah, and also you could choose two different targets if you wanted to. So maybe you kill one with a really overpowered attack. And you go, okay, great, I'll switch to the other one. So yeah, I like it. It's good. Um, then the bottom is, after causing enemies to suffer three or more damage during your turn, you may consume all waning elements, even if there are none, to make an element. Okay, and then this stays out for this round. Um, and then this swaps. So there are a few um, like interesting um, things about this card in particular. So the first time round um, that I saw this card, I, I kind of uh, this this section here was a little bit interesting, but I, we ended up kind of uh, I ended up kind of decoding it as I went, and I managed to sort of work out what it is. But essentially, what we have here is that if there are waning elements. Um, you may consume them. Um, if you do, then you get to make your element of choice. Um, if there are no elements, you may still make your element. However, if there were, say for example, you know, there's an element there that your teammate wants to use or you want to use on this turn. Now, you would have to choose all waning elements. So there's no way that you can, so the, the sort of downside to this card is that you are going to end up potentially getting rid of an element that maybe your ally wants to use because you're going to have to consume all of the waning elements so um i think it's interesting because um this character does use elements so you're gonna have to be a little bit careful there uh, it means that it's they it might make things like double elements kind of hard so it might mean that the double element stuff is is tricky but yeah it's um it's fine the other thing that kind of like is a little bit weird here is that um i presume that you must play this card first and then do the three damage so um you couldn't um you know if you were to kill something you could then go oh great i did do the three or more damage i'm gonna play the card no you have to play the card preemptively and then see so um you're kind of like putting all your eggs in one basket right because if you were to play this card first and let's say you whiffed on your attack you know you drew your miss then actually this wouldn't happen which then could have a knock-on effect to your next turn because you've been planning on making an element and doing something on your next turn so it's um it's an interesting card and it is, it's very interesting on, on how you're going to play it. So you're going to need to make sure that you have a good attack um, in order to make sure that you get to make this element. But it's an interesting design card. I think it's the templating is a little bit strange like with the with the waning elements and stuff. But I, I can make sense of it. So essentially, if there are waning elements, um, you have to consume them, all of them. You don't get to choose. You just have to consume them. And then you get to make one strong element essentially uh, but if there are no waning elements at all you still get to do your elements so it doesn't sort of like 
it doesn't really hinder you from being able to make an element per se, but it can have a drawback on either using an element that your ally is planning to use or maybe using an element that you are planning to use for your attack. So if I was to play this first and then I was like, okay, great, I'm going to play this and then I'm going to use this and I'm going to use the ice. Nope, not going to happen unless your ally has managed to play a strong element. Um, so that's sort of the way that it works. So if, you, if an ally managed to go before you and, and make a strong element for you that you could use, then this could work. But unfortunately, it's not. So this is this is this is interesting. This is going to be an interesting card to play for sure. And the switching around is just you know, um, it's not. I don't think it's maybe as useful as this. But the fact that you can kind of set up for a next turn could could make it more useful. So yeah, I, I like the fact that these switching cards have also got a little something going on on them too. It's not just switch. Uh, Hornet Stinger. So attack one, pierce three, and poison. This is a, a really quite a big AoE. Um, pierce three, poison. Um, and, but you also have to poison all allies in the targeted area. So again, this could be a bad thing to your um, to your allies. I have, I do think that this one will be a bit easier to do than the others. Like looking at this, I think. In terms of the pattern, I feel like you're going to be able to probably get like th a, a, a pretty easy three here. Like this is going to be pretty easy to get three, three, um, three monsters. Um, you know, this pattern here happens a hell of a lot in, in Gloom. This three pattern and, you know, you being in the middle. My only concern is that then you are like right in the thick of it. So um, you might end up taking a lot of damage. So maybe this shield and retaliate is going to be wor worth having. But yeah, you're going to be right in the thick of it here. Um, poisoning all allies in the targeted area, I think that makes it, um, I think that one, you can probably play around this one a bit more, but being next to these enemies, it's, uh, I mean, you're gonna, it's, you're gonna quite often find yourself in a situation when you're side by side with your, uh, with your allies, so, uh, poison is pretty miserable, but you can get around it. I think that the good thing is, is that with poison, at least poison can be, removed i just the model effect to me just feels like a, a a bad effect to give to your ally you know it's it does not feel nice to to model a friend poisoning a friend they'll be like yeah that's annoying and i guess if they were to immediately take a load of damage and die then you'd be the one to blame but um you know poison can be removed with a heal card you can plan um you could play a heal card perhaps you could even heal them i don't know maybe we have heal cards oh look we do have a heal card <laughs> but it's healing ourselves. but you know we could in theory if there's a way that we can heal an ally um yeah this is a switch as well so this one's actually on the top so we're switching here from left to right uh, all of the cards we've looked at so far have been the left left cards so uh left to right so I think it's okay. The pierce, the pierce is interesting. I kind of like the pierce in this card because it's it thematically makes sense to me that you're kind of like a stinger. It pierces armor, so it's nice that your um, attack one is gonna land. You know, so you're at least gonna do. You know, you've got a good chance here of maybe drawing a couple of. You know, if you draw plus two modify, you know, you can do three damage and poison the target. That's a good attack. So um, yeah, there's some potential here that you actually get to do some some decent damage straight up with the card. But I also like the idea, so one of my kind of like gripes with um, Gloomhaven and the way that uh, attacks work is that say you did an attack on a high shield enemy and um, you didn't do any damage but you played like a wound or a poison effect and they would still have that negative effect. Now it's thematically I don't like it because it's like oh you brushed off their armor but yet somehow they're still poisoned or they're still wounded or what have you. I find that thematically it doesn't hang together, but I do understand that it's there because it, for gameplay wise, it would make no sense to have it thematically like that because it would make the game way too hard. Uh, also, the it would really narrow down the kind of like design of enemies and stuff. You know, you'd have to be you know, very difficult and you, having like high shield enemies would suddenly become like whatever, you know, you may as well just add more health, right? You know, there's there's dynamics as to why it's there, so I completely understand as to why it's there. But thematically, it's always sort of bothered me. So I like the fact that this has got Pierce 3 because it feels like we're going to at least do a little sting, get in there and poison. So it's cool. And the bottom is just move to heal to self. So this is a good example of some way that we can maybe mitigate this uh, ambitious dare. Um drawbacks you know perhaps we could do this attack then immediately do this and essentially nothing bad has happened at all so yeah 
I think um, these two cards pair really well together, actually. Really well together, so... That'll be, uh... That'll be a, uh... Certainly that'll be a good move, I think. Doing, like, stunning something, attacking for four, then moving two and removing the wound and poison. That seems like a very strong, strong move to me. Um... Uh, there's an X card there. We'll... Yeah, we'll just keep going. We'll go with the X card. Why not? Uh, so, Draining Pincers. Uh, this is an attack four. We can spend uh, the light element, sun element. Um, your three self uh, for one XP. We can use the wind to give us an extra attack. A push one and an XP. And we just get an XP regardless. And it's just like a nice straight line. So this is like, te this is actually um, on the card slightly differently. Like in Gloomhaven, if this was on the card, it would be like diagonal. They'd show it's like a diagonal line, whereas this is like a straight line. I think I prefer the way it's done here. Um, as well as it lets them put a lot more information on the card here. Um, they have changed some of the subtle templating, I, I think, um, with Frosthaven to make it a bit easier in places. So the attack four, um, heal three self. See, healing, that's, that's something that we might need to do uh, if we're going to poison and wound ourselves. So that's, I'm fine with that. Um, plus one attack and a push. Um, the push is not like... The push is interesting. I don't think it's really going to have too much of an effect here. Uh, pushing for two generally seems good. But, you know, you may, might be able to push away some melee enemies that are going to, like, not move but do a big attack. You know, some of the, like, living um, uh, living corpses in Gloomhaven, they have a really big, like, swing attack where they don't move, but they'll attack you for, like, six or seven or eight. You know, and it, it, it could be a really damaging attack. And uh, living bones also. Some of the elite living bones also would have cards like that where they do a very big attack, but they wouldn't move. So um, I like it. I think that um, the push, you know, gives you a little bit of a corner case. But to be honest, I don't, you know, if it didn't have the plus one attack, I think the plus one attack kind of makes it like, okay, great. If it was just push one, I wouldn't think it'd be that good. But the plus one attack, okay, fine. You know, it's good. You can always just, um, you know, I presume that you can still decline pushes. So you could just decline to, to push. Um, this little pattern here, I think is, I mean, it's fairly easy to set up. Um... The straight line patterns in original Gloomhaven, uh, they do they do happen quite a bit, and there are ways for you to be able to funnel enemies into into this kind of pattern. So I think that this pattern is doable, and there's absolutely you'd be able to get two here. The third wouldn't be a stretch. So I think that this is potentially you could be looking at an attack four, attack five maybe with push for two XP. I think that's solid. I wouldn't count on this heal. I think that this is a little bit of a you know. Hey, if you manage it, you manage it. Fantastic. Uh, if you don't, no foul. I don't. I don't feel like this is something that you should shoot for. I feel like it, I would be really happy with this card if I could just do attack five with a push for two XP. That to me is great value. So I, I'd be doing that. Um, okay. So the bottom is a move two, and we can recover one right lost card. Okay. Interesting. And make an element. And then this card is discarded. Uh, well, it's lost and cannot be recovered. So basically, you can't recover this card. So, um... That's, that's kind of interesting. I don't... Both of these are burns. So, I mean, straight away... I always get nervous when I have a card like that. If both the top and the bottom are burns, I always instinctively go, okay, right, the, these must be really powerful. Um, both of these effects must be really powerful and be relevant, you know, at different points in the game. Um, because otherwise, you're, you're taking too much risk, you know, you're going to end up using these as just move twos, you know. I'd, if I was going to use this as a bottom predominantly, like if I was going to use this, I would be like, just give me a move four over that. I'll have a move four, please, that I don't have to burn. So they're both, they're both the top and the bottom is burned, so I'm not a huge fan of that. I think recovering one lost card, it kind of like mitigates it a little bit because it's like um, you kind of lose this one, but then you get another one back and, it, and you could get something very, very strong back. So if you've got like a combo or something that you want to work with, yeah, you, you know, it, it could be fine. It also could work quite well if you get an imbalance, you know, between your cards. So let's say, you know, at the start of the game, I ended up burning a lot of my uh, right cards. I could then use something like this to then recover uh, a right card to try and like balance the number of cards that I have to make sure that I've got sort of two cards of each state to play 
pretty consistent. It's interesting that they've given us odd numbers, so we start with 7 and 7. So, um, rather than saying, like, let's give them 12, you know, like if we had had 6 and 6, um, maybe they, they tried that and it wasn't enough, so that's why they've gone for an extra card. I think that allows you to maybe... That sort of encourages you to discard a right card to begin with, then a left card. It kind of encourages you to kind of keep, keep that even. So, uh, yeah. I think it's okay. The fact that it gets another card back, it means that it's a lost card, but it's you're getting something else back. So you might be able to get something very strong back. So I don't I don't mind this card. I'm not overly sold on it. I do think the top is is very powerful attack. And I think the bottom could could end up being a really good combo piece. So it's okay. Um Horn Beetle Carapace. Uh, on your next four attacks, plus one attack. Or plus two attack if it's a right card. Okay, so if you're playing right, if you're in the right state, then you get plus two attack. Um, very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, plus two attack is brilliant. Um, that can really combo off in a big way. In a big, big way. Um, I kind of like the fact that this is a left card, so you have to play this to set yourself up for when you're going to be playing your, your right cards. I think that's, like thematic and it works and i like it there's only four instances though which isn't a huge amount you know four attacks is um not a lot in gloomhaven so um i mean plus two attack is great though so if you were to do this for just a plus one attack i think it's not great i think you really want to be comboing this off with the right side obviously but yeah i, li I like this card it's got good combo potential um so the bottom is move one, uh, we can spend earth to get plus three move, or we can shield one and we can spend frost to get an additional shield. Okay, so I think something like a move... I mean, if you were to move one, shield one, that's okay. I mean, it's nothing to write home about, it's a very fine effect. It's very fine. Uh, if you don't need to move much, then it's okay. Um, spending the, um, the earth and the frost, I think is going to be trickier. Whether or not you're really going to want to, I don't know. Um, I say like element generation doesn't seem to be, from all of the classes that I've looked at so far, there doesn't seem to be like a crazy amount of element generation. This class has got some, but there doesn't seem to be like, you know, hey, we're the element class and we're constantly making it and, and what have you. So, um... I, 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 the bottom of this card's like just fine. Like it's just not got, it's not making me excited. I think you may be able to get these things to trigger. You may be able to get a move four out of it. Um, occasionally you may be able to get two shield out of it occasionally, depending on the scenario on your enemies you face and different things. But, uh, I just, I don't think you're going to be making these elements. You know, if I, if I'm making frost, I am making it because I want to play frost teeth. That's why I'm doing it, right? I'm not doing it because I want a shield too. But, hey. In some situations, you're going to only need to move one. And shielding up is just a nice little bonus. So, it's kind of just fine. But the top of this card is great. Uh, drag down. Uh, attack two. Immobilize. And this is like an interesting pattern. Like a little swooping. A swooping pattern. I kind of like it, actually. Um, it's kind of a unique pattern. I don't think I've seen a pattern like that before. With this kind of swoop round. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, and attack to immobilize, and we swap over. So, um, it's not particularly exciting. Um, immobilize can be great if you're against um, melee enemies. So, immobilize has some good use. Or if you're up against ranged enemies and you're trying to make them have disadvantage against you. So, there are, there are different applications for immobilize. But immobilize can be an, a good control effect that you can use um to your advantage so yeah it's fine attack two is nothing special but we get this swap so this is like a necessary card i like the idea that we you know can do a little bit of damage help our team a little bit maybe control a little bit then we we're moving into our next state so yeah it's fine uh, and the bottom is attack four and we can spend the light element sun element i always call it like light or sun i think it's supposed to be light <laughs> uh, disarm uh, and 1 XP or we can spend uh, earth again earth leaf 
um, whatever it's called, uh, to do one XP uh, and to change it into a little targeted pattern. So this is interesting. Um, you want to be careful burning these cards, these ones that give you the swaps, I feel, because you don't want to put yourself in a bad position where you can't swap. This character could potentially go for a very, very long time without having to rest with the swapping. Because you have 14 cards, if you play really well, um, you might not need to rest for... Oof, I mean, that's maths now. I can't do that. Seven turns. There you go. Uh, um, you know, you could go two cards a turn, seven turns. It's a long, it's a long old time in Gloomhaven. So, uh, yeah. I think it's... Um, I think it's interesting. I think... Um, actually, no, you couldn't technically go seven turns, right? Because you have to play two of the same state and you have seven of seven. Ignore me. I'm talking rubbish. Um, you'd only be able to go... You'd, you'd always you'd always end up, to begin with, with that kind of erroneous card stuck in your hand. Because you'd end up going two and two. You'd go like two, four, six, and then you'd have that one card. So, yeah. Ignore me. But yeah, so you can still go for a long time though. You can still go for like six easily. Um, it's a nice effect. The disarm effect is good. If I really think you want to be doing this, if you can do the whole thing. This is probably the most underwhelming out of the ones that we've seen, I think. This is a really easy pattern to set up though. So in theory, you could um, attack a four against two things. Personally, attack a four against two things isn't really worth a burn. You know, you can usually get that effect for... Well, you can get like an attack of three against two things very cheaply and easily with different characters. So, um, this feels like it's over-costed for the effect to me. But that's fine because you're going to be wanting to do the top of this most of the time. And then perhaps towards the end of the scenario, this actually, you know, a good opportunity presents itself for this. So, yeah. A necessary card. I, I'm, start I'm starting to feel that this is a very necessary card. Uh, into my embrace. Attack three, range three, pull two, and swap a room. Um, so we're now onto the right cards, and we have our first range attack. Um, so this is one that we could potentially add plus two to. I'm going to start thinking about that a little bit more. So, uh, range three, pull, and it's a swap. And the bottom is heal four, strengthen, regenerate um, for yourself for one XP. So, uh, I mean, the top of this card is strong. Um, attacking for three uh, with a pull, range three. I mean, attack three, range three is like a base attack. Like, that's kind of like a... That's like the vanilla attack, right? Pretty much. Like, hey, I'm going to attack three at range three. It's kind of like a very vanilla, uh, like, baseline. Like, it's not strong. It's not weak. It's fine. It's right in the middle there for a, a ranged attack. The pull two is nice. You can maybe help out... Um, you know, you could maybe get stuff into this kind of pattern. Who knows? Who knows? Actually, you probably couldn't because you're you're wrong. You're wrong sides. You couldn't be doing that. But you know, you can you can do some trickery there and help out some allies too. Um, the heal four on the bottom and the strength and regenerate is kind of interesting. I I do like that. I like the fact that you can just I feel like heal four is quite a big heal, and the regenerate is going to hopefully help you continue to heal. And you've only got 8 health at level 1. So this is giving you half your health back at level 1. And potentially regenerating a couple more points of health. I think it's strong. I think this is very good. So um, whether or not... I mean, you're not going to want to burn this very regularly. You're probably going to be wanting to do the top of this quite often. Uh, and also, again, because it's one of these swap cards, I would be a little bit nervous about burning one of your swaps. Your swap state cards. But yeah, I like this card. I think this is uh, this can really uh, help you out. So this is a really nice utility card. And the Strengthen is going to be a lot better than you think because the Strengthen is going to allow you to really combo off maybe and do some huge attack where you gain advantage and you're going to attack, uh, you know, attack loads of uh, of people. Maybe with one of your big AoEs, you're going to attack loads of things. It's gonna, the Strengthen is going to help you, to help you to sort of avoid those negative um, combat cards. Uh, selfless Offering. So, heal three, affects one ally within range three. Oh, there you go. So, there's one way that you could um, potentially heal your uh, allies for that poison that you gave them earlier on, maybe. <laughs> and the bottom is just move three jump. Okay, pretty simple card. 
nothing really crazy to write home about. Hill 3 is nice, range 3 is nice. Importantly, it's an ally, not ourselves, so it's not just heal 3, range 3. So we couldn't heal ourselves with this card, which does make it slightly worse. Um, and it's obviously then a, a support card. But to be honest, I think we're probably going to be using this for the move 3 jump more than the top, and the top can just help an ally out who's in a bit of a, you know, bit of a tough spot. So, yeah. This is like, this is one of those kind of like, you know, necessary cards that you're gonna, it's it's gonna be a role player for you. It's not gonna be glamorous. It's not gonna, you know, do much, but over the course of the game, you're gonna really enjoy the fact that you're gonna have move three jump. And a couple of times during the uh, the scenario, a heal three is probably gonna, uh, gonna help. Okay. Oof, uh, I'm not pronouncing that. I tried to pronounce it, I think the last time in the video and I couldn't do it, I, didn't, I murdered it. Herudia therapy, Herudu therapy. Don't know what that means, but presumably it means something. <laughs> uh, move three, two XP. Uh, we can wound, affect all adjacent allies and enemies. Uh, heal X, where X is equal to twice the number of allies and enemies wounded. Okay, so we're gonna move three. Um, Wound. Now, wound is a great effect. I've noticed that wound has been creeping in a lot into uh, Frosthaven. There seems to be a lot of wounding going on. There's a lot less wounding in Gloomhaven. Perhaps that's just a nature of them um, trying to make the classes more complex. Like they're just sort of they're throwing in the you know they're throwing in every element now. You know they're just laying it in. They're not you know introducing wounds slowly into the game. They're like wounds here. Deal with it. Um, you know wound is a very good effect. Uh, so being able to wound, let's say you wounded like three or four people with this, um, hopefully all enemies, not your allies. Um, so you can essentially get full health because you've got eight health. So in theory, um, you could you can heal. I mean, if you couldn't heal full eight because you'd be dead already, unfortunately. But you can heal like seven, for example, wouldn't be too bad. Um, yeah. But the problem being though is that um, I don't know why you would want to heal. Like, I wouldn't be playing this for the heal effect, I'll be playing it for the wound effect, because there's no way that I'm going to be moving... I mean, unless, of course, I mean, it's 83 initiative, you could play this card late, I guess. But, you know, you don't really want to be moving into enemies' faces um, to then wound and then heal them up. I mean, it... I don't know. Um, I think this is, this is okay. Uh, it's a move on the top as well, so that's worth mentioning, that it's a move action on the top of a card. Um... I'm not sold on this. I'm not sold on this, really. Um, I think it's, like, okay. I think it's okay. And it's going to have some use. If you manage to, like, wound loads of people, like, if you were to wound, like, five figures, I think that's insane value. I think that would be great. I think when you start looking at the real, kind of, the real case um, scenarios, most of the time it's going to be three, maybe four. Wounding four things for two XP in a burn. That's certainly a card towards like the end of the scenario. Maybe you're just willing to burn to get the experience points. So hmm. the bottom is uh, loot one, model target two. Uh, so this is, uh, I've commented on the last couple of classes. I really, really like the new design of loot or the looting action that we've seen so far, which is they're using, they're still using loot. Loot is still an action in the game, still um, a term, but. Um, most of the loot actions are being paired with some sort of ability, like some sort of secondary thing as well. So it's not just loot one, because, you know, usually this would just be loot one, is what you'd have. I'm not a huge fan of that, because to me, that is kind of boring. Uh, it also takes several actions, so you'd need to move, get yourself into a position to do the loot, then play the loot card. Whereas this, you could, uh, I mean, you still have to do that with this. This is uh, doesn't have any movement. Some of the other ones have movement tagged on. This doesn't. But being able to muddle uh, two targets is helping your team out quite a bit especially if you were next to something perhaps you just killed something you're going to then play your loot card so you know you kill something you play this you loot and you muddle the two other enemies that stood next to the, to the guy you just killed i think that's great i think it i like this design a lot more it makes looting feel more natural which i'm all for okay sweeping stingers um, attack one, model, target all enemies at range two or three. Okay, that can be bonkers. Anything that targets basically any number of enemies, you know, even if it does give you a requirement like range two or three, that is pretty crazy. You can definitely find yourself in a good position to do that. 
However, here's the big drawback, which is affect all allies at range two or three with the muddle as well. Now, this is a pretty substantial drawback, if you ask me. Um, it's quite likely that you will have an ally within range two or three of you if you're trying to do a really big attack with this. So if I was really trying to get great value out of this, and there's no sugarcoating it, you're going to probably end up getting an ally at the same time. As I said before, muddle can be really annoying because if you muddle one of your, um, you know, one of friends in the party, then, you know, they try and do their huge attack and they're like, yeah, I'm all there, I'm going to do it. And you're like, oh, I'm really sorry, I've had to muddle you. This one's low initiative too on 18, so it's, you know, you might actually muddle them before they take their turn. Then they go, okay, uh, oh, oh, I'm muddled now. Okay, I have to draw two cards. Uh, okay, I, I drew my miss. You know, and that would be a miserable moment. That would be an absolutely miserable moment. So uh, I do think that this one has some, uh, this could cause some interesting table talk. This. So we'll see. I don't feel like you're going to be, uh, you know, I don't think you're going to be the most liked player at the table if you muddle your friends too much. So you're going to have to bear that in mind with this card for sure. Uh, the bottom is move one. All attacks targeting you gain a disadvantage this round. Um, I mean, again, this is like a pseudo kind of like tanking card. This is like a... Like it, it, it achieves a little bit of tanking. You know, perhaps you might save yourself a point or two of damage, but also it could do absolutely nothing. Um, so that means that the top of this card's got to be great. And I think the top of this card is is got broken combo potential because anything that targets anything, you know, you pair this with that plus two, um, you know, a persistent ability card. You know, we're looking at attacking, you know, stuff for three with model, all enemies. Then you start playing your power potions. Then you start doing, you know, you strengthen yourself or you use your, your, um, your goggles, uh, your eagle eye goggles from Gloomhaven. I don't know if that item's in the game. It might not be in the game in Frosthaven, I don't know, but say it's in there. You know, you've got ways of really amping your damage, burning all of these items and stuff to have a huge attack, you know. And it could clear an entire room or most of a room for you. So uh, this has got a, some really good combo potential. It's got a really bad drawback, in my opinion. The bottom of this card is forgettable. So this card... It's interesting. It's gonna you, you're gonna hear some people who have some amazing amazing stories with this card. This card's gonna create some amazing stories. That's for sure, uh, either for good or for bad. Um, Scarab flight. So you got attack two, range three, and push. Um, this is basically the same as the other one, right? But this is just this is ranged. So yeah, I think this pan's you know this pan's doable. Um, attack two, range three, push one. So the push is just a nice little added thing. <clears throat> I don't think this card is particularly exciting. If you manage to pair it with the plus two, attack four against three targets again. I guess you have to kind of look at this in the context. Like if you look at this character in the context of having that thing. But you can only do it four times, you know. So you've already burned three charges with this. So interesting. It's interesting. But it's a fine attack. It's absolutely fine attack. And the push one could help you out in a, in a certain situation. So it's fine. Uh, the next four times we suffer damage from an attack, you gain shield one or shield two if we were in the left state. So this is like the the reverse of the attack card. We now got a shield one. Shield two is excellent, especially at level one. That is going to block a hell of a lot of damage. Um, sometimes they're going to miss completely and you're just going to love having shield two. Um, I think this is a strong effect if you're going to be doing some tanking. I don't know how much tanking this character is going to do. This character is really interesting because I feel like you've got, uh, you know, you've got a really nice mix of damage cards and you've got a really nice mix of like, yeah, you've got some shielding in there. Whether or not the shielding is going to be good enough, I don't really know. I feel like shield one, like the shield one retaliate one card and stuff like that. I just don't, I don't know if that's going to be enough. I mean, level one, it's, it's good, but is it going to be enough going forward? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, yeah, but it's nice to have like, this is thematically really nice. I like the fact that we've got this kind of, you know, we've got the plus two attacks and we've got this one. It's also worth uh, mentioning that they've all been ranged on the right side so far. And I believe that is the case throughout. So yeah, spoiler, when I was doing the last one, I figured that one out too. So uh, when I recorded this for the first time, so all of our ranged attacks 
are in our right and our left is melee. Which makes sense as to why there's shield attacks, for um, there's shield abilities for our left. So it's kind of like, that's our melee sort of tanking, you know, up in people's faces um, form. And right is our falling back and doing some range damage. Uh, Firefly Swarm. So we've got attack four, range three. And we can spend a uh, knight element to get plus one attack. Very nice. And we can use fire to make it this pattern. So we can basically add an extra hex on. Um, so this is this is this is strong. This isn't as strong as I think the other one, but this pattern is a really, really common pattern. Like you're gonna come across this pattern a lot. So if we were to say have an attack four and we had the nighttime element, that's an attack five, and we had the plus two attack, that is an attack of seven against three things at range three, you know, in this kind of, that's very, very strong. I think that this here is going to be kind of unlikely. I wouldn't be waiting for this. I certainly would be very happy with attacking five, even just for five, three against five. If you think in comparison to say, let's say the Tinkerer at level one, the Tinkerer at level one has a couple of uh, attacks like this. Um, they have Net Shooter, which is an attack of three, I believe, um, and adds Immobilize. And they have Ink Bomb, which is an attack of four at three. Um, and they gain XP per targets. Both of them are at XP for um, figures targeted, essentially. So up to three. Um, so this is as good as those. And you have ways to amp up. And you have combo potential because the Tinkerer doesn't have any of that kind of persistent ability combo um, for damage. Uh, you do have some ways of increasing damage um, with Enhancement Field. But, you know... I feel like this is pretty consistent. So this is this is excellent. This is definitely aggressively costed. It's a burn. It's a it is um, quite an aggressive card, uh, and which is why it's a burn. It's fantastic. Uh, power level wise, this is very high. So great. My advice would be not to wait for this. Probably not going to happen unless you can really consistently make both of these happen. But I feel like um, this is where it's going to be at. Attack of five against three for uh, two xp in a burn that's where i'm at with that one uh then we got move three regenerate self and we switch from right to left um this is awesome like regenerating i like regenerate is um sort of an ability that i haven't been able to really do much hands-on time with because i haven't actually managed to play the gloomhaven expansion um forgotten circles um yet we're in isolation right now so my gloomhaven group isn't meeting but we we are planning on starting that as soon as we can so we will be starting that up but regenerate on the surface looks like an incredible mechanic being able to recover one health at the beginning of each of your turns until you are damaged uh, it's like a reverse wound almost so yeah the fact that you get a little bit of benefit there's a good chance as well that you can probably get at least a heal one out of this maybe a heal two or remove something like a wound so or a poison so yeah i like it i like it really really nice really nice this is a very very strong card very strong card indeed um reshape the guys so loot one regenerate itself perfect again loot is on the top of a card here as well which is great because that means we can move and loot in the same turn so essentially we can do that the regenerate itself again just talked how i think regenerate is a great mechanic and i think this will be really really useful um, and the bottom is move two, but recover one left lost card. So this is like the reverse, and we get to make an element. So this is kind of interesting. I think we're going to be probably playing the top of this card much more than we will. The, I mean, the bottom is a loss, so there's not, we're not going to be playing that very often. But it might be worth keeping this card in because this is, you know, relevant enough. The other one was a burn top and a burn bottom, right? Which was my kind of concern with it. Yeah was that it was a burn top and a burn bomb and the top was a very strong burn so you know you'd have to like mm, you'd, you'd really have to um plan on what it is that you wanted to do you know with this one because could do this and this is going to come down to your party makeup right and your kind of flow of play and the way you like to play um how easy it is to get those elements that you need but I like this one because we have a top here that is useful even if we loot and um, we don't really get anything, right? Even if we don't really get anything, 
by looting. The regenerate effect on its own is a little bonus, so even if we don't manage to get the loot, just having that little regenerate makes it feel like we haven't completely wasted our turn. So I like it. And if you were to, you know, in typical Gloomhaven, the way that, you know, a room would play out, let's say, is, you know, you open a new room, uh, you kill all the enemies, and then usually you've got a little bit of time, you know, maybe you're going to long rest. Um, you've got a little bit of time before you open the next room, usually. It depends on the scenario, of course. Um, so being able to kind of like move, loot, regenerate, then maybe long rest uh, means that you're going to gain quite a lot of health back. So you're going to be pretty healthy going into the next room. You know, you're going to be like, um, you know, basically have regenerated four health. So. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, also, again, the the combo potential that this provides, I think, is, is interesting. And I and uh, this seems to be the only one of the only other ways to make the elements yourself too. So this is gonna you're gonna be setting up your cards probably with with this. You're gonna be setting up um, your big packs with these. Uh, flaring hatred. So attack three. Target one enemy at range four or five. Um, Say curse yourself to target two. Um, muddle yourself to add plus two attack. So it's kind of interesting because uh, it's range four or five. So they have to be quite far away, which isn't particularly hard. It's going to be very useful for getting archers that like to hang around at the back of rooms for sure. Um, being able to curse yourself to target two, I think is... I mean, range four or five is already a bit tricky. This feels like the kind of card that in a four, uh, sort of a four player group, the target two is going to come into play a lot more. But if you're playing with, like, with just three of you or two of you even, are you really going to have two targets at range four or five? Unless you're playing, you know, unless you're against some sort of, you know, swarming style enemy, the, the little enemies that, that swarm around you. Um... I don't know. I don't know about that. And cursing yourself can really come back to bite you. So, and the reason they've got the curse there is they've also got the muddle here. So, it, I think that I would probably be more likely to go for the plus two attack here. Probably not go for the curse. That would be where I'm at with this. So, an attack five. Basically, you're going to be attacking for five with disadvantage. Um, which, if you manage to scope your um, shape your combat deck pretty well, which we'll go into at the end of this, we'll have a look at the, the character sheet. Might not be that much of a drawback. You might actually have a fairly good deck. So, oh, that's good. I'm down for that. I'm down for that. I like the, th the theme of this too, the flaring hatred, you know, like you're lashing out. So you're kind of like, you're uncontrolled. So the muddle is sort of like quite thematic for that and the curse too, because you're just like, you know, you're just, you are just lashing out in all directions to try and uh, to try and do some damage. Uh, immobilize. Target two adjacent enemies and move four and a jump. So, um, this is quite nice because you get to immobilize the enemies. Then you're going to be able to move away from them. And with the jump, you can basically go wherever you like. Um, so this is like a really good, like, get out of jail card, in my opinion. Like, if you, let's say you get swarmed by living bones, you know, or some really annoying melee, um, uh, melee enemy. You get swarmed, you know, you're facing damage from lots of different directions. It's fine. Immobilize them. Immobilize the two, you know, most dangerous enemies and just off you go. Disappear. Uh, which I like. Um, 1 XP. It's also going to be super easy to burn this just for XP at any point in the scenario. So you can pretty much bank this 1 XP. Uh, that's going to happen. Uh, yeah, I like this card. I like the fact that the top has got some, you know, corner use. And the bottom, you're probably going to be doing the top way more. Well, you are going to be doing the top way more because it's a burn. But, you know, you're going to be... The way to think about it is, is that, you know, are you happy to play Flaring Hatred potentially, you know, three, four times in a scenario? Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy to probably do that. Um, and then we'll probably do this like, you know, we'll do this once. So, um, yeah. I like it. I think I'm. I think where I'm at is I'm at. I'm at five. Target one. Attack for five. Uh, and model is probably where I'm at with that. The model will stick around for the following turn, so that is worth bearing in mind. Um, so on your next turn, next turn, you're also going to have disadvantage. So you need to think about that as well in the sequence of your turns. Uh, so harvest the essence. After moving through or more hexes during your turn, you may consume all waning elements, even if there are none, to create an element. So same as the other one, um, but this one is about movement rather than damage. Um, again, 
you have to play this one first so uh, you play that then after moving three it's not if you moved three or more hexes during your turn it's after moving three or more hexes which is important clarification to make so you do have to do the top of this first not that it probably matters too much but let's just say that you know there are um i mean there may be some corner cases about the way that you want to work with the elements right so the fact that you have to play this first then immediately kind of nullifies the fact that you won't probably won't be able to trigger the bottom of horn beetle carapace for example you know th things like that you need to be to be aware of that you're going to be using those elements um before you get to take your main action so you can't really pair this card with one of the big element using cards it's going to be very difficult to do so um Let's switch states. Attack three, target one enemy at range four or five. So similar to this, but without the actual, um, without the added, uh, added um, sort of costs. Uh, it's the it's a bottom, so it's a it's a bottom card attack, which is fairly rare. So and it's a, a fairly decent one. So if you really want to like nuke down an enemy, I can see a situation where you may even like play both of these cards together. You know, you're gonna you're gonna attack attack them for five, and then tag them for another three. Who knows? You know, just to try and kill some sort of archer that's like really really troublesome because archers can do a lot of damage if left unchecked. So yeah. I think this is this is solid. I, I again, I feel like these cards here are going to be uh, big role players for you. So they might not be particularly glamorous, but they're going to really serve a purpose in making you function. All right, let's jump into. Oh, we got one more X card, then we'll go into level two. So we've got Mind Spike, Attack Four, Range Three, Target Two. Um, we can spend a Night Element to add a Curse here, and uh, we can spend a Fire to get a Wound. Uh, one XP, one XP, one XP. Okay. Um, this is, this is like, this is much better than, than the other one. If we can, um, this is much better. This is like akin to the, um, uh, the frost, the frost one that we had, which is the melee attack. This is pretty like, you know, this, on terms of power level, this is, this is very good. Again, if you think about it, that, you know, we could potentially add, um, two extra damage to this through that persistent ability so we could be doing six damage here targeting two things for six then if we were to add curse two curses curses are um i mean curses can be absolutely busted all right they could be broken in gloomhaven and there is a combination of characters in gloomhaven that can absolutely break the game using curses pretty much um trust me i've done it <laughs> and um wounding as well is equally very powerful because it can probably account to an extra point of damage maybe two points of damage so this is very very strong i feel like this is the kind of card where i would really be trying to get both elements because they're, they're really quite good both of them um if i could get both elements i'd love it i think this is if you could only add the wound though like if you could attack two things for four damage with a wound for two xp um that's maybe slightly lower on the sort of power scale you'd probably be looking to maybe you know, attack three things for that rather than two um but the fact that you can kind of you know you don't need a pattern you can just do it from wherever it's going to be quite nice um yeah i feel like this is this top is one that i'm going to be really trying to get the curses in there as well um would i pick curses over wound i think i would probably pick wound over curse because you want to play with things you can control in Gloomhaven. Now, giving a character a wound, that is definitely a point of damage. Cursing is just, here, put a curse into your deck. They still have to draw it. And trust me, you will draw terribly in Gloomhaven at times. And I'm sure you will in Frosthaven too. So, you know, they will still draw their double damages and the whole deck will get shuffled and you will you may never see these curses. They may never come up in the game. So I'd much rather deal with the thing that actually happens, which is wound. So I'm going for the wound here. So if I could choose one of the two, I'm choosing the wound, but I would really, would quite like to get both of these effects here. Uh, move three, jump. So again, I like this. The, the jump is going to be super useful. The move through is nice and it switches our states, which is a necessary thing. So we're going to be playing the bottom of this card like a lot. And we're going to be waiting for a good opportunity for this. Um, okay, so level two cards, Rupturing Skin. So this is a left. So it looks like at level two, we get the choice of a left uh, and a right, which is interesting because I thought maybe we would get like two left cards and then two right cards. And we'd have to, I suppose that would be crazy because it would scale in a ridiculous way. 
Um, but because we have to choose between left and right, and we only have two cards, presumably we're going to be probably alternating almost between the two, depending on how balanced you want to be as, as you play this. So that's going to be that's going to be interesting because obviously the first one that you get is then going to bring you up to eight cards. Oh no, it's not going to bring you up to eight cards because you always have a hand of seven. Me just being that's me just talking rubbish. That's me just talking rubbish. No. Absolutely not. You still have a maximum of 14 cards. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. But I was wondering about whether or not. But I guess you could just, uh, I guess then you could in theory just go all for the same uh, side and just, hey, just go all for the same side. Uh, and make you, one of your states particularly strong and make your other state more of a supporty state to help you out and to empower the other, the other state. So, Rupturing Skin, anyway, is attack two with Brittle. So, this is the first instance of Brittle we've seen, I think. I think so, so far. Uh, one XP, it's just a nice little pattern there, easy pattern. That That's a very simple pattern. So, the way that Brittle works is Brittle is sort of um, a reworking of, uh, like, kill an enemy. So, we used, there used to be a, um, abilities in Gloomhaven which would just kill a normal enemy or kill a elite enemy. And... Um, they were kind of broken at times, and other times just not very useful. So at other times you would struggle, like if you were just dealing with like elites and stuff, you know, sometimes normal enemies are not that difficult to deal with, but elites can be really tricky and you've got a card in your hand that's kind of a bit of a dead card because you're facing down a room full of elites and you've got this card in your hand that only kills normal and the bottom half of the card might just be not very good or just rubbish. So, Brittle is the new sort of thing that's going to be sort of replacing that. And what Brittle does is at the beginning of the enemy's turn, they take 10 damage, essentially. So, it's just like 10 damage. So, this card is very, very, very strong. Because if you think about it in that sense, we're basically going to be doing an attack of two, which is, you know, underwhelming. But Brittle on potentially two targets is going to be insane. So, this is almost like attack 12, target two. Almost what it's like. So this is very, very strong. Very strong. At least if that's how Brittle actually works. I've been looking at Brittle a little bit, but I'm, I say, I'm trying to keep myself kind of spoiler free. So I may get that slightly wrong, but that's my understanding of how Brittle works. I think you remove the Brittle token at the end. So I don't think it stays there between rounds. I think they take sort of Brittle damage and then they, they go. Um, I think that's how that works. Uh, I might be completely wrong with that, but I think that's how that brittle works. Um, so the bottom is retaliate three. We're going to gain one XP each time we retaliate. So, um, hmm. So retaliate three is really strong, really strong. Um, you know, if you were clever and you made this work. If you got yourself into melee range and you know whack this down, you could you know, maybe maybe trigger this three times. I think like three times would be a really, would be would be great. So let's say nine damage for and one XP for each time you retaliate. I think that's that's pretty strong. The problem my problem with retaliate and particularly retaliate that you have to play and then it happens. What happens if you play this card with the intention of retaliating and they all draw like heal cards or your enemies just don't attack that round? It feels miserable. That's the problem with retaliate is that judging when to use it. But the, the good, the kind of the good thing about this guy is that the top is really strong. So you just you just change your plan. You just change your plan. Um, I think you want to be using the top of this card every every time. And maybe at some point you'll you will play this to get like you know a crazy amount of experience points or something like that if you can engineer a good situation. This is like. This card's very strong, very strong indeed. Yeah, love this card. Okay, so level two, uh, attack three, range four. Um, and this is a nice pattern. This is a fairly easy pattern to come by. I feel like again, like this three pattern is like the most common pattern that you, you get in Gloomhaven. So they've just added an extra hex on, which is just nice, added bonus there. Um, we can wound ourselves to add an extra attack. Uh, and we can poison ourselves to increase the, uh, well, add an extra two hexes to the um, attack. So this is similar to the other one um, where we're going to be doing some damage to ourselves, potentially. Um, this, I feel like the wound one here. See, this is this is like, again, how it's like the, the plus one attack is definitely one that we're going to be using here. 
absolutely we are going to be taking the wound to do a plus one attack because if we're going to set this up for three it's it's 100 percent it is worth you having wound to be able to do one extra attack against three maybe four figures absolutely now this pan here i feel like is going to be like you know shoot the moon time you know how regularly is this going to come up very rarely against certain types of enemies maybe if you're against very low um you know again like a swarming enemy low health swarming style enemies could be great um to be able to do this and then maybe you would only need to an attack of three i don't know um the fact that you can potentially get three xp out of this card is pretty crazy so um yeah it's a strong card i feel like this is probably where i'm at though um I'm probably just adding the plus one attack and doing this. I feel like this is kind of like really shooting the moon. I don't rely on this at all. Um, and then the bottom is move two. All attacks targeting you gain disadvantages. Around. We've already had a card that's the same as that, I believe. Um, so this is almost like a replacement for, for that card. Um, I mean, in terms of power level, I believe that this card is way more powerful. Like, I'm looking at it and I'm just thinking, I can recur this card. Like, it's got so much opportunity, I think, to, to play with. Um, this card, you know, the fact that it's a burn to do a, to do a big effect, whereas this is not a burn and it gets you an XP, I, I, I love it. I mean, that's going on the fact that I'm understanding Brittle correctly, which I think I am, but I may well be completely wrong. Um, yeah. I'm going to be, I think I'd be picking Rupturing Skin at level 2 here. Um, but like, it's, you, there's an argument for, for both, because this one's got a fairly good um, sort of one. The interesting thing is, though, is that this is a move to um, all attacks targeting you gain a disadvantage this round, but it's not, like, on the right-hand side, you're generally a ranged character, so you're not going to be pairing this. It's unlikely that you're going to be... I mean, you might be taking some, I guess, some ranged damage or something like that, but... It, it's not you know you're not in your kind of tanking state if you will uh when you're when you're using this set of cards so i feel like this card is really strong because the top of this is always going to be good you can reuse it constantly during a scenario it's always going to be great and the bottom is going to have some interesting like corner case like i want to get some xp plus this this card here will accelerate your leveling loads i'm telling you now this card could potentially accelerate your, your leveling a bunch so yeah um okay so mandible storm attack three curse oh and it's like a uh, it's like a little tie fighter um immobilize yourself and then you switch okay so you kind of leave yourself open to uh, attacks here which is not great um you sort of end up sort of being stuck uh, the curse is great. I mean, if you could, if you could get all four here, that is amazing. Um, cursing two, I think, is still pretty strong. So I mean, like, this is good. This is like in terms of like a card that you just want to keep playing again and again and again. This is this is good. Uh, the immobilizing is a bit of a drawback, and considering that we're going to be moving to our right um, form, which is our ranged form, you know, we're then going to be potentially stuck in the middle of people so that could cause us a, an issue so that's something to think about um but yeah no it's um it's fine you know i think that this is definitely a card that i will be looking to play a, a bunch you know try and get the curses going that's something that we that me and my group talk about a lot getting the cursing going you know if you're doing cursing get it going get that train rolling start getting you know three four five you know once you start getting a lot of those into there it can really help out it can really help out um, okay, and the bottom is move four, and we can spend wind to get plus one move and jump for one XP. We can shield two. Um, we can actually get an additional shield, so earth is an extra plus one shield. There's a lot of text, <laughs> lots of things going on on this, but it's very simple. So, um, it's a burn card. Again, I'm not, I wasn't a huge fan of the other one, which had this move and shield effect that we had earlier. I'm not a huge fan of it here either i think the shield two is a lot better so there is going to be a situation here where you can maybe move forward you know if this was just move four shield two uh one xp and burn is that a good card um yeah it's pretty good actually it's pretty decent so i think you would probably um you know you'd probably find some use out of it um 
can you get these elements? Now that's the trick. If you could get these elements, I think obviously it's excellent. Being able to increase your shield by by one could be great. Um, adding the jump, I think. Adding the jump, as I said before, I love jump. I think the jump here could be uh, could be a game changer here. And it's an extra move. You know, move five with jump is basically go wherever you like at this point in time, pretty much. So, um, uh, the top of this card is very strong. The bottom, I don't, I'm not convinced you're going to be able to get the elements to work, but I do think that it does just a move four, shield two, it's probably worthy of a burn later on in the scenario. And you can get one XP from it. So, again, leveling. So it's going to, it's going to, it's going to level you a little bit. You know, you could potentially get three XP here, but I think you're probably going to end up just getting one most of the time. But, yeah. It's okay. So, firebugs. Attack three, range three, target four. So that's a big old target. Targeting four things. Um, you can add, ooh, muddle with night. And we could add plus one attack with fire. Ooh, so if we could add attack three plus this, so attack four plus the persistent ability, that's attack six against four targets, which would be the entire persistent ability, right? That would burn it all because it's only the next four attacks. But attack of six against four targets for, you know, two XP here and plus the two XP we'd get from the, that other card. That's worth mentioning. We'd end up getting like four XP. I mean, that's 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 power leveling, folks. That's really good, and that's very strong ability. So this card is fantastic. I think, I think this really has good potential. Really, really good potential. Um, the model effect, I think, is great. But again, I would, I am, I am. If I can get fire going, I am more than happy. The model is like the cherry on top, right? If you could pair this with a strengthen again, like, oh man, this could be this could be broken. This could be really, really strong. This is like I mean for level three, this is this is very, very strong. But I mean it's uh, it's a level three card, you know. It's um it's good to see the power level. The power level I think is definitely strong with this you know, on this character. I mean the power level is is above what you would expect from the starting classes in Gloomhaven. But there's some really cool combo potential there. You have to work for it, but man it man is it there. It's there. If you want it, it's there. So, yeah. Really, really strong. Really, really strong. Uh, the bottom is move four, and which is excellent, by the way. Move four. Brilliant. And uh, we get to change an element into another element. Great. Absolutely great. I mean, this does mean that there has to be an element there, so different to some of the other ones we've seen, where you could just get one out of thin air. This one, uh, you do have to convert an element to another element, but then we get to switch. So, again, we can use this to get the element that we want to go and do our really powerful combo, you know, our first Frost Heave, which is our level one, you know, the Frost Heave card, to then go and do a huge attack. So... This card is fantastic. I, the thing is with this is that I feel like the bottom half of this card, right? Because you you always got to compare these two because this is what you're going to be doing most of the time with this card and this is what you're going to be doing most of the time with this card. So you've almost got to compare these two and just sort of like these two are like the uh, the deal breakers, right? I mean, this is incredibly strong compared to this. But if you think about like which one would I be more likely to be able to do and which one's going to be more useful in setting me up? Uh, absolutely this absolutely this because this yes it's fine but i feel like the immobilizing is going to be enough of a drawback but this just being able to make an element that you, of your choice um yes there has to be an element there though so there is some sort of uh, you know it's not perfect it's not perfect by any means but oh man could it be good yeah i love this card i'm i'm all about firebugs here over these two uh, I mean, I can understand why you'd want to take this if you were like really into your tanking, but man, this is this is this is cool. Uh, Fresh and flail, level four. Attack one, then attack two, then attack three. So this is better than the we had the other one, which was like attack one, attack one. So this is just like stacking with uh, poison. So again. I like these effects because it means that you can use poison, you can use strengthen, like, you know, there's lots of different things you can do to make these better. So, um, yeah, I like the way as well that you can, looks like you can enhance these quite quite a bit too, so that's nice. Oh, you can, even, you can enhance this with, like, poison, like, you can attack one and add it as, like, poison, 
Like, you can have, like, poison and wound, and then you can have attack two plus one. Like, oh, that would be sick. That would be sick. Cost you a lot of gold, but it would be sick. <laughs> uh, the bottom is move three, push two, affect all adjacent allies and enemies. And same as the other one, consume an element to make an element. Um... Yeah, I like this. I like the, I, I see, I love this card with enhancements. Uh, with enhancements would be great. And if you can combo this with poison, this can be very strong indeed. Very, very strong. Um, if you think about it, that it's just like, even if you wanted to just do it against one enemy, right? An attack of six against one enemy. That's still very strong. And it's not a burn card. Like, that would be a burn. In Gloomhaven, if you were just to say... Attack that guy for six. In fact, I think Devastating Hack is a card that the Brew has, and it's like, attack six, like two XP, and then it's gone, or something. Um, or it's an attack seven, sorry, maybe. So maybe this is this is not quite as good, but in ways it is, it is better, because we can stack different things like um, Strength Burn and Poison with these attacks. Yeah, and the power level is, is up there. Uh, Radiant Flight. So we have Immobilize. Affect all adjacent allies and enemies. Then we get to move three and jump. Okay, and that's on the top. So that's a bit different. So we have a move and with a jump on the top. Immobilize. So again, you, this is a good way of just getting out of trouble. This is a good getting out of trouble sort of card. The Immobilizing your allies probably won't be too bad. You can probably make it... You can either avoid it or you in a certain situation it's probably not going to be terrible you're only going to immobilize you're only going to want to do this when you're in melee range anyway and you're like in trouble so you know probably going to have like your tank sat next to you and you'll be like i just don't want to take any damage so you can just disappear and then the bottom is attack two target three enemies at range four and it's on the bottom so it is an attack on the bottom uh, that one's pretty boring. That one I'm not a fan of, to be honest. That is kind of a little bit bleh to me. The, the top is like an okay control card and allows you, you know, a bit more mobility. The bottom is a very so-so attack. Yes, it targets three enemies. Um, but an attack two against three at level four, unless you're adding something extra into this, like that plus two that we could do with our position ability or something else, it just, it doesn't grab me, it doesn't excite me. I feel like with this one, I'm all over the other card because I feel like this has like, again, we want we want elements, we really want elements and this, this character looks like it's going to struggle with the element side of things, it's going to be tricky for us unless we can, f I don't know, pair it with a different class or something else that can help us out, but... I feel like we're only going to be able to make one element, so we're going to have to always just take one of these effects. And the good news is, is that there is one that's clearly better than the other one, pretty much. Um, but this is going to struggle, this glitch class is going to struggle making these elements to have these big impactful turns, and this helps you do that. So, um, yeah. But for me, slam dunk. I'm over this. Absolutely, I'm going with uh, Fresh and Flail there. I think that would be that would be my pick. I try not to pick too much because I'm sure that people are going to have their own builds and it's going to be exciting. But uh, this character has got me particularly excited. Uh, I love the combo potential that this character is showing. I love the different mix of cards. Thematically, this class is just like oozing for me. I love it. I think that it's really nicely designed. I love the fact that I'm going to have this sort of internal puzzle with my cards. I'm going to have, you know two different sets of cards and I'm really going to have to work out how to use them well. This class challenges you to play well and you get the rewards for playing well with it, which is what, to me, is really exciting about this class. So let's take a quick look at the character sheet. So let's take a look at what kind of perks we can get. So if we can do hopefully some consistent damage. So we've got the remove two minus ones. We've got the re replace one minus two with or minus one and one... PS2 card, um, rolling modifier, okay. Replace one plus zero with one rolling plus one. Replace one zero with one plus one poison. Okay, so yeah, we've got ways here. It looks like we're starting to move towards the plus one. I wonder if they're going to change rolling modifiers in Frosthaven and the way that you deal with the um, advantage, because sometimes that could really uh, screw with you. Uh, replace one minus card with one uh, consuming element to make an element. Interestingly, these have always been black and white. I don't think they've ever not been black and white, so I don't know how they're going to... Uh, um, 
Uh, I'm guessing this is just a prototype for now. <laughs> I've never seen colour on these sheets before, so that's interesting. Maybe we'll be in colour. Um, replace one plus one uh, card with one plus three card. Uh, add two plus one pushes plus one cards. Um, uh, add two... Um, Rolling modifiers, we regenerate self. And again, I'm gonna comment again on this because the uh, I've done this on the other characters, and I'm really super um I'm really super behind this change to this perk. So this ignore negative scenario perk in old Gloomhaven, this would just be ignore negative scenario effects. Full stop. Nothing else. This one adds one plus one card, which just feels so much better. It's just like you know, the negative effects in Gloomhaven were never really enough to warrant taking it, unless you were really, really struggling with a particular scenario. It never really warranted it so having that plus one now you know now it's like hmm well i get the extra plus one which is great and i ignore the negative sorry suddenly it becomes like hey this is a pucker one and that's great they're obviously listening to feedback or you know through just generally play and the amount of the gloomhaven has been played obviously this is maybe a common comment and criticism of that perk so really excited and glad to see that they've made a change to that to make it just generally better overall um, but yeah, these are some strong perks. It doesn't look like we're not pushing ourselves up to the really high damage end. So we don't have like stuff that's going to give us like an extra plus two. You know, there's one here, which is replace a push uh, plus one with a, with a plus three. That's essentially giving us a plus two. But to be honest, I'm going to be removing the minus ones. I'm going to be probably replacing... Um, I mean, this is interesting because you're kind of like negating one damage and you're adding a pierce to flip. I'm a bit on the fence about that one because it's basically just saving you a point of damage and giving you a pierce two, which I'm not. So it's giving you an extra point of damage, sorry, and, and giving you a pierce. I'm not sold on that. Um, replace one zero with one rolling plus one, so that does allow you to maybe get more. But again, depending on if you use advantage or not, the advantage rules could could screw you on these sorts of things. Uh, replace one plus zero with one plus one poison card. Excellent. I would be. Basically, I think I'm going this, this, and these two. It's probably what I'm doing. <laughs> so for the first, uh, for level one, I'm removing my two minus ones, pretty much. And then for level two and three, I'm doing this. Uh, maybe for level four, I might be, I might consider doing. Uh, uh, I might consider doing. I might consider doing this. Yeah. So anyway, you're moving towards the plus one. So I don't want to uh, stay on perks for too long. But yeah, I really, really like this character. Um, if you can't tell already, I just love it. I think this uh, is my favorite so far of the classes that I've seen. I really, really enjoy the kind of... Um, the internal puzzle that this class is gonna gonna give you with you managing your two sets of cards, I think it's really clever design. I think it's it's like uh, breathes a bit of life into that sort of side of Gloomhaven. I think it's gonna challenge players. Uh, this is gonna be a pretty difficult class to play. Um, I will say, in terms of difficulty, this is probably up there. But again, that's more because of the management side of things is going to be very tricky. And there's going to definitely lead to some analysis paralysis turns with this class because you're going to have so many, you know, you're going to have extra cards to look at. And you're also going to have to be planning, okay, well, in several turns, I need to transition and go like this, you know. So, and you're going to be presented with a lot of information. So, this class could. Be a bit prone to analysis paralysis so if um you know you have any players that you play with who are particularly thinky and like to go into the tank this this could cause that i think um but for me i just love the challenge that this is going to provide the different directions you can go the utility that this character has i think it has some great utility um it's going to be just a really good solid damage dealer um in your um party and it's going to have a little bit of off tanking upside too and then you know some little heals and things in there if you want them too so i think this class has just got a lot of potential so i really really like it and um yeah and um, that is the Geminate. Okay, so that was the Geminate class. Uh, hopefully I managed to keep sort of like my uh, surprise up there because I had sort of seen some of these cards before because unfortunately I lost all that audio for the first time. But uh, I really, really uh, like the look of this class, if you couldn't tell already. I 
this is so far this is going to be the class that I'm picking to choose uh, to play when Frost Haven comes out I'm really excited about it uh, please let me know what you think of it in the comments below so put a comment what do you think about this class and uh, yeah please do like and subscribe if you uh, enjoyed this content it really does help me out here on YouTube I'm just starting out and I'm really trying to to create a nice little community here but also we've got a community going on Twitch where I stream regularly uh, I stream every Monday Wednesday and Sunday usually Gloomhaven but some other games too so come drop by at uh, twitch.tv slash mandatory quest come hang out and say hi and if you've got any questions you can always catch me live and ask me there but thank you so much for watching guys i know the videos these videos have gone very long but hopefully it gives you some insight into sort of my process of looking at the different classes and things but uh yeah thank you for watching